Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic of discussion is on multicast routing protocols. Like uh, previously, uh, I have explained regarding unicast routing protocols and the classification under unicast routing protocols. Similar to unicast routing classification, here we have the classification for multicast routing protocols. So if you can recall the classification for unicast, unicast routing protocols were broadly classified into two categories interdomain and intradomain and you have seen that in under intradomain you have learned the distance vector routing algorithm link state vector routing algorithm and under interdomain the algorithm is path vector routing algorithm the example that is the protocols for each of these algorithms the very first one for the distance vector the protocol is routing information protocol for the link state it is open shortest path first and for the path vector routing the protocol is border gateway protocol Similar to that classification, we have the classification for the multicast routing protocols as well. Here also we have the two different categories, interdomain and interdo inter intradomain and interdomain. And the difference between these two protocols, between these two routing, inter and intra, I have explained in my previous lectures. So intradomain once again, which are the protocols that are working as multicast routing protocols that you need to know here. So here we have three protocols okay, under the intradomain category. The first one is the distance vector multicast routing protocol. It is an extension of actually RIP which was there in unicast routing. Then we have MOSPF multicast open shortest path first and this is an extension of OSPF of unicast. Fine. So this protocols RIP is what it is, it is implemented using the distance vector routing and OSPF is implemented using the link state routing. Now this, the third protocol under the category multicast is PIM, protocol independent multicast. Actually this PIM works in two modes, one is the DM that is the dense mode and another is the sparse mode. So we normally write like this PIM DM, PIM hyphen SM sparse mode. So these two protocols are the, uh, actually these two protocols, you need to learn the functionality of these two protocols under the intradomain. Next category in this multicast is the interdomain and the protocol is multicast border gateway protocol. It is an extension of what? It is an extension of border gateway protocol of the unicast routing. So this is how, so definitely when it comes to routing, you have to take care about unica not only unicast routing but also the multicast routing protocols. So similar to unicast routing classification, this is what we have the classification for the multicast routing protocols. Once again, I have given this classification, this diagram just to make the students get the connection between the different topics that are presented one after the other in the textbook. The next part in this multicast routing protocols you need to know is the approaches to multicast routing. So we have two different approaches to multicast routing. The first approach is called as the source based tree approach and the other approach is called as the group shared tree approach. Group shared tree approach. Now before you uh, come to know the difference between these two approaches, first look at this whatever protocols you have learnt okay, in this intradomain whatever protocols are mentioned. Now, which approach these protocols makes use of that you should know. So, source based tree. Now, DVMRP that is the distance vector multicast routing protocol, multicast open shortest path first and PIMDM. Okay? Just use, look here, not the PIMSM, only PIMDM. These th three protocols are what they use the source based tree approach to multicasting. I will be telling you what exactly is the source based tree approach whereas the other protocol in this PIM SM. So PIM SM okay, uses the group shared tree approach. Okay, That also I will be telling you with an example what exactly you mean by group shared tree approach. So this is how exactly the topics are given one after the other in the textbook. Now look at the word, here. look at this particular topic here, source based tree and group shared tree. First and foremost thing is you are learning about multicasting. That means one message, okay, one to many. Multicasting is what? One to many. Same message is sent to many recipients, fine. 
Now, when you are using multicast, I think I should not uh, repeat again in my previous lectures also I have been telling uh, all the this one uh, host they make use of what the nodes they make use of the multicast destination address addresses that are in the multicast class. So, class A is one class B class C the class D which was there is completely belonging to this group which group multicast group. So, that block is meant for only multicast addresses and uh, it was like the first octet if you remember it was 224.0. First octet was 224 the block was 224.0.0 slash 4. This block is completely meant for the multicast routing right. So, this is a huge block addresses from this block can be used as the destination addresses in when a packet is used for what multicast routing. Now, the source based tree approach. So, like in unicasting a particular node will maintain a routing table to reach every other node in the network. Now, every other node means one to one because you were learning there unicast routing. So, one node find one node sending a message to another node this is called as one to one. But if one node is sending to multiple nodes then it becomes what multicasting it is sending to many nodes here. So, in case of multicasting what exactly in unicasting fine in unicasting if this is one node like that you have in the entire network the other nodes also. So, every node will try to maintain what the next hop as well as the cost to reach every other node in the network that is maintained in the forwarding table in case of unicast routing or whatever protocols are used in the unicast routing. In, in the same way here multicast is one to many, many is what many means there are multiple hosts in one group. The recipient is not just one it is a group here. So, for that I will give you one example ok one network scenario where we are saying that ok one particular node is sending what to pack uh, is sending the packet or the message to multiple nodes in the network. So, these nodes come under one group fine we can say group A something like this. So, for this group the address is given multicast address. So, if for all these members this is what only one multi one address is given and that becomes the multicast address. Now, this is one source fine and this is another group. Now, for the same source there can be another group also second group is not it there also you have some 4 or 5 members let us take. So, then this becomes what group B. So, what is that source has to do? Source has to have what the routing path to reach group A, the routing path to reach group B. Likewise, if there are other groups also group C, group D, group E like that group E like that there will be multiple groups and not just one source there can be multiple source also. Now, source 1 is sending what the packet to group B is interested in sending the packet to group A like that there can be another source source 2 which is also interested in sending the packet to group A and group B. So, how many sources are there and how many groups are there in the entire network will decide the number of routing trees. So, we say here source based tree. So, if at all I have to show you with one actual network scenario let me take if this is the host fine through the network it is connected definitely through the network and this is the router. So, here we have this router connected to some other router let us show some networks here to make you understand uh, what the source based tree approach then you have So, here uh, this particular uh, router is connected to one network here another then here one more here one more like this there are different networks that are present here in the entire this one network uh, internet or is an autonomous system. You can give the names network n1, n2, n3, n4 and n5. Source based tree approach uh, for this source ok. For this source how many groups are there in this particular entire autonomous system that many trees will has to be constructed like that many trees this particular source should have. Now, let us take group there is one group out of this let us say in group A only host that are connected to N3 and N2 are members just for example I am saying uh, group B 
some networks are there n4 n3 and n5 okay and group c there are some uh, other networks which are part of this group c n2 and n3 anything like this i'll just show you so there are three groups that means this source is one and it should have what one source to group a this source so let me give the name also source one to group a source one to group b source one to group c fine this many trees are possible just imagine that you have one more uh, host which is also interested in sending the packets so let us name this as source 2 now source 2 should also have what the path to reach to group a group b and group c there are three groups here for example just for example i am saying so what what is the conclusion the conclusion is if in this network if there are two sources fine now just in this example you see there are two sources and three groups how many groups three groups then you will have two into three six six routing trees are possible six routing trees should exist here for this particular internet so in general if you have to say if there are m sources and n groups then you will have if there are m sources and n groups then you will be having what m into n as the number of routing trees in the entire internet or in this autonomous system so this approach is called as the source based for every source there should be a tree to reach to the particular group and group can have what members it is not that uh, exclusively n3 n2 if they are in group a they should not be there as members in another group they can be a part of another group also so like this now when the packet comes definitely the router will take care suppose if the packet from source 1 is intended for group a let us take for group a group a is what only network n3 n2 for example i am telling if source a is sending a multicast packet which is intended for which group group a then this router will see that okay the destination network is the destination group is group a and group a has got members from network n3 and members from n2 so n2 is here and n3 is here look here so what it will do is it will place the packet that multicast packet on this interface so that it should go towards n2 and it also places the packet onto this interface so that it will go towards n3 so it is the actual the router's job to place the packet correctly on that interface so that it will reach us the network uh, that belongs to a group it will not place the packet now look here we have another two in two more interfaces but it is not going to place this because the multicast address is mentioned for group a and here on this interface if it places it is reaching what n5 and n4 n5 and n4 are not the members of the group a so this way it will take care about the uh, placing the packet so this is mainly not to show how the packet is getting forwarded to the different groups this uh, explanation is mainly to make you understand the meaning of the source based tree approach next we have the other approach also existing in multicast it is called as the group share group shared tree approach so this one is the second uh, approach here now group shared tree approach how it is taking care to send the packet to the different groups number of groups let it be in this example also i'll just tell you group a group b group c there are three groups here but the word the approach is group shared tree here the word source is not used we are having a tree only from what only from the core router we give this particular router or we designate this router with the core router now one router in the autonomous system is chosen as the core router and every source who, who wants to send the multicast packet to the other groups will first send the packet what to the core router and the core router will take care in order to uh, will take care what the forwarding of the multicast packet to the different groups so there is no role of here source that is getting involved in the tree so in the routing tree in the previous example you are having source to group combination isn't it now you exclude the source we assume here that what first source has source has sent its multicast packet to the core router and the core router is taking care to forward that multicast packet to the different groups so in that in this particular approach source has sent and you can see that routing tree will start only from the core router so like this there is one core router 
identified and this core router will have what how many if there is one core router then definitely the core router will maintain what trees for only these three groups fine so look here earlier it was six now it goes got reduced to three in the source based tree in earlier source based tree approach if the number of routing trees were six now what is happening this core router is having what trees to reach the different destinations uh, the different groups so it will have since there are three groups and it will have three routing trees fine so this is how we can say that we are reducing the number of routing trees okay because see the more the number of routing trees the more the number of forwarding tables for each of the router to maintain to forward the packet and normally if you look this is the same concept like what you have studied in the unicast routing also least cost paths and the least cost trees so there you have seen whatever least cost paths that were more in number but that got reduced with the with the help of what with the help of the concept called as least cost trees similarly here source based trees are giving more number of routing trees in the uh, internet or net, uh, network which will get reduced the number of routing trees will get reduced if you are using what the group shared tree approach but definitely in group shared tree approach the uh, routing is happening with two steps because first the source has to send no the source has to send the packet to this uh, router core router so we say there is one unicast transmission taking place so unicast delivery is there from the source to the core router and from the core router the multicast delivery will start so when it is sending a unicast uh, this one delivery here it will make use of the what the tunneling mechanism it will encapsulate that multicast packet this source will encapsulate the multicast packet in where in the unicast ipv4 address because it has got this router has got what unicast address it is intended only to this router and that that is why the destination is a unicast address here so it will first send to this core router it will encapsulate its multicast packet and then send to the core router here then the core router will decapsulate that packet when it decapsulate it will see that the packet is a multicast and it is intended for this so and so group group a or whatever it is so it will try to forward that packet to the networks belonging to that group only so this is how this is how you have to analyze the understand the difference between the source based tree approach and the group shared tree approach now once you learn the difference then you go back and see okay these are the protocols that are based on the source based tree approach and then this is the protocol that is based on the group shared tree approach so hope it is clear to you all the explanation for this topic bye bye take care